Hello, good evening, good night, and good morning, wherever you're at. So we are continuing the flower of life, and I appreciate y'all for coming, tuning in, and um seeing what we find out this shows this smells really good I smell it Smells really good. Okay, so that's that. So where we left off um, was where he's visiting the temples and he sees the flower of life and all the um, the shapes that it creates in that temple. So here we go. Figure 2-9 to nine is down in the second temple. The arrow indicates a place where Katrina unknowingly took a photograph of the flower of life. Here's the same picture taken with my camera. Figure 2-10. to 10. My photo came out better than hers. And you can see in the shade that there's another flower of life pattern on the same stone side by side to the left of these two flower of life patterns on the same stone are other related figures the stones that were used to build this temple including the one in these figures are huge I would say they weigh at least 70 to 100 tons it makes you wonder how those hairy barbarians move all those 100 ton stones around there are many related patterns on these walls. The left one is this. The left one in this photo, figure two to eleven, is called the seed of life, which comes directly out of the flower of life pattern as shown in figure two to twelve. So you can barely see it, but excuse me. The allergies, allergies, you can barely see it, but it's right there. And I've seen another uh, documentary where they go in this other part of Egypt and, and the, the flower light patterns like up, up on the ceiling, you know. So there was water at the bottom of this wall. So I couldn't get in there, but I was wondering what was on the other side of the stone. So I learned, so I leaned around, put the camera on automatic and took a picture to see what would come out. This is what I got. You could barely see it in this photograph, but it shows many of the components that are that are aspects of what we're going to be studying in this course. So here's more of the pattern. So this is the the seed of life. You know, and it reminds me of in the Bible the tree of life and the the tree of knowledge or something. So seed of life in the middle, flower of life, flower of life with other components at top. Okay. It was an amazing feeling to look at these drawings because they were so familiar to me and I knew that what they meant and here they were arranged on the Egyptian on an Egyptian wall thousands of years old. The drawings were ancient, yet I knew exactly what they were carvings of the cops. This next shot sh shows a wall in the second temple taken from a long way 
away using an 80 millimeter lens on this wall is a drawing which you can barely see in this photo figure 2 to 14 though we could see it clearly when we were there it looks like figure 2 to 15 it's a symbol for Christianity but it originated with a group of Egyptians called Copts who lived at the time when the Egyptian Empire was dying. They later became the very first Christians. If we include two other Egyptian groups who were connected with them, the Essenes and the Druids, you might not think that these two other groups had Egyptian roots, but we believe they did. So this is a salt the Coptic symbol but this symbol too in the Hopi they have it and it's like a like the wheel or whatever the four patterns also could be a swastika too four seasons something like that Coptic design this is a Coptic symbol, and when I saw it, I realized it was probably the Copts who made this drawing related to the Flower of Life, not the original builders. The Copts came much later, but they probably knew this was a place for resurrection and used it for the same purpose. The building would have been several thousand years old when they made these drawings in this case the drawings would have been no older than 500 bc which is when the cops began this is the actual coptic symbol a cross and the circle sometimes found inside a triangle this is another one in which you see the cross and circle through it's very worn through it's very worn at the top you see the six loops of the center of the flower of life in the egyptian drawing whenever you see a sphere over your head it means that the focus is whatever is inside the sphere that's what they're thinking about or what the purpose is at the moment excuse me am i freaking out of this and freaking dust. So I don't know if you see, but so they're saying like the little bubble is like the thinking bubble. It's like when you're thinking, you're like loading, you're loading your thoughts. So I want to apologize for the last video. I just ended it really fast. I was like getting really hot and I was like, oh, I'm just going to end it. But there's like a bunch of ideas that I was thinking. I just want to apologize for ending like all fast. So here we go. So the cross, it also looks like the umbrella, you know, from the fish umbrella. The, the, the freaking, what are they? The masons or whatever. The Templars, there we go. Figure 2 to 18 is another way this symbol is sometimes used for intersecting arcs with another an outer circle around them. I find this photo very interesting, figure 2 to 19. You see the fish breathing air. This was done before Christ. It's Coptic. It has 13 little notches or scales, if you want to call them that. And it's breathing air. We've seen a fish breathing air before with the Dogons and in Peru. Now here it is in Egypt and it is seen in other places around the world as well. It's a fish. It's a fish person. So, yeah. When we're reading about the Dogon, how they have the, the, um, Nomos, Nomos, I think it's called. But that they came, you know, so and, and this is all tying up to like everything. So it's just like the fish, you know, 
it's also a symbol for Christ and um, stuff like that. Give me a second, right now. Boom. So, um, yeah, it's this fish symbol is used for the Christians, you know, but that symbol been around for a long time and so we're going to get into it the early church changes christian symbolism when you go back and really study some of the older writings you find that there was a big change in the christian religion around about 200 years after christ died in fact he wasn't very well known for about 200 years at which time the greek orthodox church which was the most influential church of the day made many changes in the Christian religion. They discarded many beliefs, added others, and changed things around to fit their needs. One thing they changed was an important symbol all the way back to the time of Christ. Some were some all the way to the time of Christ. From everything we've been able to read, Christ was not known as the fish, but as the dolphin. It was changed from the dolphin to the fish during the Greek Orthodox editing. Today, Jesus is referred to as the fish, and even modern Christians use the fish to represent Christianity. What this means exactly, I don't know. I can only speculate when we walk about when we talk about dolphins. In addition, the Greek Orthodox Church also removed from the Bible all references to reincarnation which previously had been fully accepted as part of the christian religion see so they edited like a lot the christian uh, bible the king james version is like completely like edited so you don't even know so there's a lot of good things like the dolphin you know dolphins are very smart so they're like comparing god to a dolphin but also like the water people you know so it could be um something like that related to to them and um yeah what do you guys think so far about my reading it's it's um it's a little choppy but i gotta like get more in the rhythm, you know, get like, okay, and these allergies, allergies, I gotta, excuse me, thank you, thank you, thank you guys for waiting. The flower of life scare geometry. This image of the flower of life, figure 2 to 20, is not only found in Egypt, but all over the world. I showed you photographs <coughs> of it worldwide in volume 2. Yeah. Yeah, see that this thing, been, it's a lot of temples, a lot of different places. It's found in Ireland, Turkey, England, Israel, Egypt, China, Tibet, Greece, and Japan. It's found everywhere. Almost everywhere around the world, it has the same name, which is the flower of life. Through elsewhere around the cosmos, it has other names. Two of the main names would be <coughs> translated as the language of silence and the language of light. It's the source of all languages. It's the primal language of the universe, pure shape and proportion. It's called a flower, not just because it looks like a flower, but because it represents the cycle of a fruit tree. The fruit tree makes a little flower, which goes through a metamorphosis, metamorphosis, <laughs> metamorphosis, 
metamorphoses and turns into a fruit, a cherry or an apple or something. The fruit contains within it the seed which falls to the ground and then grows into another tree. So there's a cycle of tree to flower to fruit to seed and back to tree again in these five steps. This is an absolute miracle, but you know it goes right over our heads. It's so normal that we simply accept it and don't think much about it. The five simple miraculous steps in this cycle of life actually parallel the geometries of life, which we'll continue to see all through this works. Excuse me, sorry. This is uh, the um, remarkable, the tree of life too. You see this in, in uh, music videos too. That, that freaking girl, she had it. Um, <clears throat> the seed of life. As I was showing, as as I was showing earlier, figure two to twelve. In the middle of the flower of life are seven interconnected circles, which if you take them out and draw a circle around them, you would, would, you, if you draw a circle around them, would create the image called the seed of life, the tree of life connection. Another image in this pattern, which you're probably more familiar with, is called the tree of life, figure 2 to 22. Many people have thought that the tree of life originated with the Jews or Hebrews, but it did not. The Kabbalah did not originate the tree of life, and there is proof the tree of life does not belong to any culture, not even the Egyptians who carved the tree of life on two sets of three pillars in Egypt at both Karnak and Luxor around 5,000 years ago. It's outside of any race or religion. It's a pattern that is intimately part of nature. If you go to distant planets where there is consciences, I'm sure you'll find the same thing. I'm sure you'll find the same image. I think I said thing. <laughs> Sorry, I had to pause. But here we go. So... Yeah, the flower of life is like basically been around everywhere around the whole world and it just shows you that these people were thinking the same thing or they were all communicating with each other, you know. So if we have a tree, then a flower, then a seed, and if these geometries do in fact parallel the five cycles of a fruit tree that we see on earth, then the source of the tree would have to be perfectly contained within the seed. If we take the images of the seed of life and the tree of life and superimpose them, we can see this relationship. Yeah, figure two to 23. See how perfectly they fit? They become like a key, one fitting directly over the other. In addition, if you look at the tree of life that was found, on the Egyptian pillars, you'll see one more circle above, though. One more circle above and one below. Figure 2 to 24. This means there were originally 12 components, and the 12 components ver versions also fits perfectly over the whole flower of life image. There is a 13th circle to the tree that can either be there or not. Focus. Yeah. <laughs> Superimposed tree of seed of life, tree of life with two extra circles. Vesica pisces with key axis. Pisces. Pisces, Pisces, Pisces. The Vesica Pisces. 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 Yeah. My, my bad. 
<laughs> in square geometry, there's a pattern that looks like this. Figure 2 to 25. It's formed when the centers of two equal radius circles are placed on, on each other's circumference. The area where the two circles intersect forms what's called a visca piscis. Pis, piscis. I, I heard this a lot of times too. Vis, vis, visica piscis. <laughs> okay. This conf configuration is one of the most predominant and important of all relationships in square geometry as you'll begin to see there are two measurements in the vis the visca persis one that runs through the center across the narrow width and one that connects one point to the opposite point through the through the center that are keys to a great knowledge within this information what many people don't know is that every line in the tree of life, whatever it has 10 or 12 circles, me measures up to either the length or width of the visca Pisces, Pisces, I think, in the flower of life. And they all have golden mean proportions. If you look carefully at the superimposed tree of life, you'll see that every line corresponds exactly to either the length or the width of the of a visca pisces this is the first relationship that became visible as we came out of the great void the great void is another key that will be discussed soon <laughs> okay sorry i had to pause again um these dang allergies just like boo <laughs> So pretty much yeah the Visicia Pisces the flower of life corresponding the great void. Oh yeah and, and uh, about the seeds like the seeds and all this stuff like um I had like a a thought like formulating after I did DMT and the things I seen and I was realizing, like, what about if the seeds are like the eye of God, you know, the eye of Odin, and they can see, they can feel, you know, they say plants can feel and all that stuff. So, you know, how they're connected with God and all these things. So, you never know. And then maybe like a seed, how they say, like, what came first, the seed or the egg or the chicken or the egg or the seed or the plant. So like what really came first what about if it came out of like the quantum universe like out of the black hole out of the void well yeah like this right so it came out of the void like the seed and then it manifested itself and it popped out and it grew into a tree i don't know that was like the thing I'd be thinking. The things I was thinking about. But. The golden. The golden proportions. Yeah. So I just want to let you know. You are golden. I am golden. And, uh, that's something, like, I would always, like, remember. Like, it would pop in my mind. I am golden. And plus all these, these dreams I had. This one dream I had, um, I was, like, in this booby-trapped house. But it was like a magic. It was like the kind of like the X Men house, something like that. And I went over like um like a doorway, but it was like a big doorway, and I went under it. And this jet engine 
turned on like this big like looking flame came and uh it started like burning me it started burning like melting me and i was like there and i was just like screaming ah. and then i looked my skin melted off and then my my bones were made out of gold and um at that time i had like hair like goku you know or i had like <laughs> hair so like in the dream that's how i i, I see myself and it burned off and then i woke up and then but that whole dream there was like different things i was doing like in that that dream in that time i was like training that was before i knew about mount atomic gold also and um it was just like i was seeing these things in the dream you know and um so that was one thing that was like in 2000, like, shoot, I want to say like 10, 11. That dream. Yeah. And there was some other training I was doing too, but I got to write that dream out too. I haven't uh, wrote it down, but it's in my mind. So that one was very interesting. And then after I found out all these stuff, all these things about gold. Um, and one of my DMT experiences too, like I seen a golden box with an eye on it and, uh, these, they look like women hands, like feminine hands, like they came with a box and, uh, the box had an eye in the center and the hands were made out of gold. And I was all like, what the heck? I can't believe what I'm looking at. And, um. It was like this too. It kind of looked like this too. It, and it, it like started opening up. Like a kaleidoscope. It, is, it was spinning. And then <clears throat> the eye came out with other eyes. And it was like a chain link of eyes. Like spinning like a circle. And it was all spinning. And all the boxes started opening up and unfolding. You know, like, doo, 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 doo. and then um, eventually, like, it started closing. The eyes went back, spiraled back inside, and um, it basically closed, doo, and it faded away the DMT. But that's where I'm gonna end right there, and um, just wanna say. You are golden. Thank you for watching. The future is in your mind.